channel. Who am I here with? Josiah. What are we doing, buddy? Trying to test in that 340. Okay. Tell me about the airplane. What do you know about it? It can go really high and it can go really fast. What's our altitude, son? going Canton 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 What are we going to do in Canton? Get the airplane fixed. Get the airplane fixed. Do you know what they're going to be fixing? The landing light and something else. The landing light and the auxiliary fuel pump. Auxiliary fuel pump. Okay. Are you glad you got to go flying with me today? What do you think of uh, being up here? Really cool. Really cool. Okay. We're doing this trip to get the auxiliary fuel pump fixed. This circuit breaker popped the other day. on the auxiliary fuel tanks, most of the fuel is going to the engine to power the engine, but about 30 gallons per hour is what the fuel pumps put out, and you can see right now we're burning 20 gallons per hour per side. So the extra fuel that the pumps are pumping is returned to the main engines. That circuit breaker popped, so there's a problem with the pump. So we're going to have the pump uh, replaced today. So we took off with full fuel, but as you can see, our fuel load is imbalanced now. We're burning off of the auxiliary fuel tank on the right side. And our left engine is burning off of the right main, so we're cross-feeding. And we're doing that to get our auxiliary fuel tank yeah. down on the left side. So that uh, they won't have full auxiliary tank when they tear into the tank to change out the pump. Yeah, Josiah, what is it? You can see the ground down there in the water. Yeah, Josiah's looking at the lake. We got a nice view today. It's a, uh, a beautiful day to be flying. And I thought I would just show this. my son in the airplane with me and I just wanted to show this video we're cross-feeding fuel right now and this makes people nervous but if you look at my fuel selectors I've got the uh, right engines burning off the right auxiliary fuel tank the left engine is running off of the right main hence the imbalance on the fuel gauge here now the light tells me that this is indicating Turbo or the J Rams 3 arrival 
turbo intersection to get to Canton. So real quick, we'll go to flight plan. No, it's going to be a little while, buddy. So originally I'd follow direct Canton. Then they asked if I could do the J-Rams, and I said, sure. So we go procedure, select arrival, J-Rams, Dublin, load. It's already loaded. Then I get on here, and it's got my J-Rams arrival. Every single waypoint between the initial fix, Dublin, and our destination, Canton. It gave me the turbo transition, so it's just a matter of going direct, enter, enter. And then we go back to our flight plan page, and there we are. So on this screen, we've got the whole flight plan, and you can see it kind of curves around the Atlanta class Bravo. Easy, easy to load. Now, in addition to the Garmin 530, I'm also running the Garmin 696. And as you can see, I did load the arrival on this one. I've got um, direct destination. And I'm zooming the wrong direction. But you can see the point where I hit direct destination. And when they gave me the arrival, I just left this direct destination. I like to do that because I can always see where I'm going. There's no clutter of all the waypoints on the arrival that I'm going to be flying. And then it also gives me an accurate uh, estimated time to destination if I were to turn direct. So if at any point they fill me off of the arrival, I know how many minutes I've got. And that will help me for my, uh, my descent planning purposes. I'd also like to point out here that when I set direct turbo, it tells me, hey, you're bearing to turbo is 300. Currently I'm tracking 301, so I take the uh, the HSI and I set this 300, and then the CDI course deviation indicator is going to tell me, hey, my left of course or my right of course. And with this autopilot, I like to keep it on heading mode and just make corrections as I go. So that's why you'll see we're just a hair off. We're correcting back to the left. Now this nav page two tells me bearing and track, estimated time to the waypoint, distance, and my ground speed. But I can go back and get a CDI needle here too, and it'll give me an idea. In fact, it gives me the exact cross track, 0.34 nautical miles. We're right, of course, so we need to correct back to the left. So what I'll do is I'll come over here, I'll take that heading bug, and I'll turn it two or three degrees to the left. turning then I'll come over here and see what kind of correction angle I've got and you'll see the track just went down to 299 so in the next few minutes we'll be correcting back and you'll see the CDI needle close in on the fix or on the course on the course to be correct Thank you.